S group of ecosystems we're going to talk about. Uh, and again, we're talking about ecosystems as they relate to living organisms, the stuff we've been doing all year long. Uh, what is life, abiotic and biotic factors. Well, it turns out that in aquatic ecosystems, uh, the, um, the abiotic factors play a very important role in how the ecosystems are uh, classified. So things like water flow, the depth of the water, the distance from shore, the amount of salt in the water, and again, similar to terrestrial biomes, latitude is going to be an important um, factor in ecosystems, aquatic ecosystems. So of all the water on Earth, uh, about two-thirds of the Earth is covered with water. Uh, remember our discussion on the color of globes and the color that a representation of a cell should be. Uh, we've talked extensively about how important water is for life. Um, even if we use chemicals like silicone instead of carbon to build biological molecules, they would have to be in a water environment, at least the way we understand life right now. So we're going to look at how communities live within these water ecosystems. And there are three major groups of water ecosystems. They are freshwater, transitional, and marine. Uh, freshwater is a low salt content water. Transitional is in between freshwater and marine, and marine is the salt water environments that we associate with the oceans. So for the freshwater, there's only about two and a half percent of all the water on the planet is fresh water. It's almost all marine or transitional. Of that two and a half percent, Almost 70% of that two and a half is in glaciers, and there are no, uh, at least not large ecosystems the way we think of lakes and streams. Another 30% is in groundwater, and again, that's much different than uh, lakes, streams, and ponds. Those lakes, streams, and ponds make up about 0.3% of all the fresh water on the planet and within that 0.3 percent almost all fresh water species uh, particularly large animals are going to be found so freshwater ecosystems are the things you are mo more than likely familiar with uh, we have examples of all of these around here lakes ponds streams rivers and wetlands uh, We'll start with streams and rivers. So like the Medoxta keg runs through town, uh, waters in a river and stream will flow from the headwater, that's where the rivers start, to the mouth, and that's where they feed into a, another body of water, a lake, a stream, or the ocean. There are usually very few species living in the fast moving regions of the water because of sedimentation and uh, many other reasons uh, and rivers and streams are very important as they contribute to erosion uh, for land uh, ecosystems lakes and ponds uh, this is a picture of pleasant pond in island falls uh, when you think of a lake and a pond, uh, it's important for you to realize that during the winter, most of the water is at the same temperature. We always have a layer of ice over it. Uh, and that's great for snow sledding and great for ice fishing. But below that layer of ice, the water is from top to bottom, just about the same temperature. Now during the summer, summer that's a little different as the sunlight will warm the surface parts of the water and the deeper parts will be colder uh, and that leads to changes in, in uh, temperature and that's important because in the spring and the fall the water is actually going to turn over as uh, heat rises uh, hot uh, cool water goes down and warmer water goes up that helps to mix the nutrients and it also helps to mix uh, oxygen which would also be considered a nutrient uh, all the way throughout 
that lake for the winter. Uh, lakes would be divided into three different zones. They would be the littoral zone, which are the shallow areas uh, close to shore. The uh, open part of the lake, the middle of the lake, would be the lamenic zone. Uh, and that, but that would not go all the way to the bottom of the lake. Uh, the actual bottom of the lake is referred to as the profundal zone and that can be different depending on whether or not the lake is deep enough so that it gets sunlight all the way to the bottom. Uh, we have some transitional areas. These are areas that we would uh, often call wetlands, especially estuaries. This is an estuary in Bar Harbor that when you went to Bar Harbor with your class trip, uh, hopefully you had a chance to visit that. These transitional zones are again the salt levels change. The salt levels are different than they are in the ocean and lakes. Uh, and transitional areas, places where you have a transition from one ecosystem to another, are usually pretty good areas for a lot of biodiversity. So transitional ecosystems like estuaries and wetlands are important bio, for biodiversity. The marine ecosystems are those that are in our oceans, uh, and those are divided into the intertidal zone, which is the region that is uh, affected by the tides coming in, going out. The open ocean, uh, not going to be affected by the tides, but the open ocean is going to have two different layers from surface as from the surface downward. The first layer is called the photic zone, and that is the layer that sunlight is able to get to. Now that should trigger some ideas in your mind because that sunlight is what primary producers use to make glucose and oxygen. So primary production can really only happen in this photic zone. And a lot of it is due to the um, uh, not so much plants, but uh, small organisms that are able to do photosynthesis, uh, plankton, phytoplankton. Uh, below that region that gets sunlight is the aphotic zone. So any organisms that live in that aphotic zone, the producers that are the bottom of their ecosystem, their bottom of their food chains, food webs, have to come from the photic zone. Now the other part of the ocean, and that's going to be true for both the intertidal and the open ocean, is the bottom of the ocean itself. The bottom of the ocean is referred to as the benthic zone. And when you're talking about the benthic zone in the open ocean, the deepest parts of the open ocean especially, that benthic zone is called the abyssal zone. Uh, there are also some special marine ecosystems, uh, coastal zone, uh, similar to the intertidal zone, but this goes out a little further than just the tides. Again, this is a transitional area, and there is a very good biodiversity in the coastal zones. It will depend on the type of coast that you're dealing with, sandy shores or rocky reef, uh, rocky shores. And the other very important special marine ecosystem is the coral reef. Um, and coral reefs are made of living organisms. They are uh, very important for supporting uh, a large amount of biodiversity uh, and they are in trouble because of changes that are going on in the environment and pollution. So we try to protect coral reefs. We've even tried to uh, manufacture artificial coral reefs to help uh, with them. So in summary, uh, freshwater ecosystems are gonna, and marine ecosystems are going to have the same requirements that other ecosystems had on land. They are based on the number of producers that are available. And for the most part, those producers are photosynthetic producers. Uh, they use sunlight. So they has to be able to reach, uh, sunlight has to be able to reach them in order to uh, work. So in freshwater ecosystems, we would include things like ponds, lakes, streams, rivers, and wetlands. 
Those wetlands and estuaries are transitional aquatic ecosystems. They are between. Uh, wetlands are only wet some of the time. Estuaries are uh, in between salty and fresh water. The marine ecosystems would be divided into zones that are classified according to their abiotic factors. So the photic zone, the abiotic factor that would be important is sunlight. The aphotic zone, the important feature there is lack of sunlight. The benthic zone is a little different. Uh, that's the bottom. There is no sunlight. They depend on things coming from the surface in most cases. Although in those abyssal zones, there are places where chemosynthetic organisms live, and they provide the bottom of the food chain for those organisms living there. Uh, and again, estuaries and coral reefs are very diverse of all ecosystems, including the terrestrial ecosystems. All right, so I'm going to put up the assignments uh, either today or tomorrow for this section. We'll have a summary of uh, assignment for this chapter, and then we will move on to uh, the next chapter and try to relate it back to everything we've done throughout the year, including... Uh, what is life? How cells get and use energy? How they reproduce? Uh, and many of the other things we have touched on. So I want to thank you again for your hard work. We are getting very close to the end. Only uh, two or three more weeks to go. Uh, and hopefully next fall this will all be over and we'll be back to the usual way we deliver education and deal 